So this is a map of Southern California showing the air quality on the day that I recorded this. This is a question mark. Is all this stuff in the air bad or dangerous or unhealthy? Well, we know that risk is a part of living, so we can't avoid risk, but we can try to minimize risk. And that's why I point out the air quality uh, maps to you. Some activities do have high risk and you might choose to do those anyhow, like rock climbing or driving faster than 70 miles per hour. Um, why do you do that? Because the benefits outweigh the risk. So each of us has to decide risk versus benefits. That's just risk assessment. But this is something where um, you need to know, have, you need to have all the information before you, before you can actually understand what the risks you're taking. And that's why it's important to understand these air quality data and what PM 2.5 is. So on this day, particulate matter was quite high and that was spe specifically PM 2.5 particulate matter. And that is leading to the red and the purple, uh, which is considered unhealthy for all groups and staying inside is the recommendation. So this data table shows the United States, so this is only in our country where this was, uh, these standards were set thanks to the Clean Air Act of 1970. And um, this also established the EPA. So this is established and monitored by the Environmental Protection Agency. This is for ambient air. So ambient means outdoors air, okay? It's uh, one thing to note that outdoors air is regulated, but not indoors air. Uh, in part because it would be impossible to regulate all the different indoor spaces. So this is outdoors air. Quality standards, and a standard is the allowable level. So the allowed level of an air pollutant. So let's think about that for a second. What's an, an allowed level? Well, if something is an air pollutant or a water pollutant, any pollutant, you don't want to have that much Okay, so the government standard um, are set to have these numbers that should not be exceeded. So the higher the number means that it's less toxic. The lower the number, this means it's lo lo more toxic because the government's saying you can't be exposed to that much of it if a very low number. Um, a higher number means you, you can be exposed to more. It's not that terrible, okay? So these are for those air pollutants we talked about the carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and ozone, and also the particulate matter, this is PM, okay? So the uh, carbon monoxide has, uh, oh, sh I should also, before I start, is the standard values are in the units of PPM. So those are parts per million. So it's important to understand the units. These are concentration when you have a mixture, so one component in a mixture. This is another measure of concentration. This is micrograms per meters cubed, and this is important in talking about particulate matter, okay? So in for only the gases, the concentration is in PPM, listed in, in parts per million for the carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and ozone, air pollutants. Okay. So we can see that these numbers for carbon monoxide have a one hour average and eight hour average. What that means is that you can be exposed to uh, relatively more carbon monoxide, 35 compared to nine. You can be exposed to more carbon monoxide in one hour um, than over an eight hour average. And that's because remember carbon monoxide, when you remove yourself from the source, your body will, will kick out the carbon monoxide and replace it with oxygen. Okay. So this is a relatively, these are relatively high values when you compare them to these other values. So carbon monoxide is the least toxic. These are lower values, these are in the decimals. It would actually be better to report these as parts per billion, okay? But uh, they're all here in parts per million so we can get the carbon monoxide in. So uh, we have the lowest number of 0 0.1, 0 0.053, 0 0.07, 0 0.075, 0.5. The lower values, let's look at what's the lowest. Um, these two are kind of, this is the absolute lowest, the annual average for nitrogen dioxide. That's the lowest number. But this is also pretty close, 0.07. 
And this is an eight hour average of ozone. So this is why I mentioned that ozone is considered the most toxic for human health. Uh, this number is really just a shade. It's 0.02 difference from the annual average of nitrogen dioxide. And it's also measured as an eight hour average compared to annual, which means that when you're looking at something every day or every eight hours, they're, the government is saying, this is more toxic. We're looking at it every eight hours compared to over the average of a year. So ozone is considered the most, um, the biggest con determinant of the air quality day most of the years, most of the days of the year. And um, that's because it is the most toxic. It has the lowest standard, okay? So there's nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide as well. These are also relative, these are low numbers as well, but ozone is the one that is the determinant for whether it's a yellow or red or purple day um, in the absence of wildfires. So for particulates, remember I mentioned you have PM2.5 2 and PM10. So this um, lowest number, on using these numbers for the concentration when you have the solids, this is micrograms per meters cubed. This is the lowest number, is 15, and then also close is 35, and that's the PM2.5. So particulate matter PM2.5, having the lowest number means you cannot be exposed to much, at least the government says, and so therefore this is more harmful than the PM10 with a higher uh, standard value. And one more thing to mention about air quality is that air is a shared resource. So is our water, so is our land. And when a resource is shared, that means that many or all use this resource. And typically we're using it because we want to use it, we need to use it. Um, but the problem is when we have a shared resource, no one individual is responsible for the maintenance and upkeep of that resource. So often, unfortunately, what happens is that shared resource becomes overrun, overused, and abused. And this is uh, this called the tragedy of the commons. When you have a shared resource that is um, something that individuals need to seek out their own goals, like for instance, here's uh, these sheep, they're just trying to eat, the grass, and this is a shared field, okay? But there are more users coming in, and no one individual sheep understands that they can't overeat, but um, so they're just trying to live their life and eat. And um, what happens is while they're just trying to live their life and no one's responsible for it, they're just doing their thing, um, this becomes contrary to the common good of all these users. And so this becomes overrun, overused, and in general abused. And so this, uh, for the common resource of air, uh, this common resource, no one is responsible for it. We do have the Environmental Protection Agency in the U.S., but not all countries have an, an Environmental Protection Agency. Not all countries have air quality standards. Um, even it's dependent on the EPA regula regulatory agency itself and how well it is doing the regulation. So it is something that is common in other environmental issues, like water is also a common resource. But what happens to air is that we end up with air pollution, and that's because we're all just living our lives. We're breathing, we're, we're driving, we're buying stuff. And um, on the small scale, the small amounts of um, air pollution we generate you don't, doesn't make any difference to you as an individual, but when you add it all up collectively, everyone living their lives leads to the um, unfortunate consequence, the tragedy of the commons, that we end up with air pollution. So um, air pollution it is something that is on was on a sustainable path, uh, it, thanks to the EPA and government regulations. But, um, you know, we have certain certain days that we cannot we can't control like these wildfire days. So air pollution is a problem. It's the fault of many emitters, okay? It's not just one person, it's not just one country, and it is a classic example of tragedy of the commons. So we'll also get into this for other uh, things like greenhouse gases, other non-renewable resources, deforestation, it's other issues in environmentalism.